Okay, uh, now that you've got all the rut restriction under your belt and we've finished up all the, all the lessons on rut restriction and using the wear clause, uh, begs to ask the million dollar question and that is um, have you been writing efficient queries? And I suppose it's in order to define what I mean by efficient or efficient queries. And it's really comprised of two things. Uh, an efficient query is a query where the WHERE clause uses either an index or the primary key to access the data. And number two, it's a query that doesn't do a table scan. And a table scan is where all of the rows within a table have to be read to produce the record set. Now we're going to be just scratching the surface on this subject. Uh, truth be told, I could teach an entire class on this subject and, and still not cover all the facets that there are to it. So, But my number one goal here is so that you're going to be able to determine if your query meets the criteria that I just outlined. So in other words, the two things that I've used to define efficiency in a query. And, and for those of you out there taking this class that are relatively new to SQL, yeah, you might be asking yourself, well, what do you mean? I, I'm using the tool and the data comes back almost instantaneously when I ask for it. And, and it comes back really fast, even with the tables that have 80, 90,000 rows in it. So why do I have to care, care about efficiency? Well, again, and I keep harping on this, as you write queries, you're ultimately or you're potentially going to be ending up writing queries or doing things that are going to go against production type data. Or, and that's data that is in high volume, millions and billions of rows of data. And if you apply a query that's not efficient, you can end up pegging the system resources and, and really bringing the application or whatever the, the host system is to, to a screeching halt. And uh, to kind of illustrate this by telling a story, I was uh, working with a, with, a, with a customer, oh, it's been quite a while, maybe seven, eight years ago, and they had a report that they ran against uh, this log file, this huge log file that had billions and billions of rows in it. And they would run it every night. They would run a report against this file. And uh, it was an audit report because it contained information on the users of the system that were accessing patient records. And so it was a very important report to this customer. Well, as the customer's data grew and grew over the years, this thing was always took a long time to run, but their, their nightly process had a six hour run time. And they got to the point running their query where the thing would just bend. It, it, it couldn't complete in time. And, and so they were kind of at their wits end, what do we do? And they come back to us as the vendor and, and ask, can you, can you put an index on this column? And we said, no, we can't. And I don't want to digress and get into the reasons why sometimes it's not practical to put indexes on tables and things of that nature. But uh, I'll be able to say, I sat down and, and did some analysis of what they were trying to do. And I was able to, through analysis of the data and some of the things they were doing, it wasn't a very complicated report. I was able to help them uh, craft a query that pulled back a, enough of the data set that they needed that they could get their report out and they could do so and their query would run against the primary key so it would get so they had efficient access and it took their runtime which at that point couldn't even finish within six hours and we got it down to about 60 or 70 minutes so they were they were pretty thrilled about that so the idea is as you're as you're working with data and querying query efficiency query performance is is a very important subject knowing how to effectively tune a query to write a query that that performs optimally is is very important and and it's 
it's a bit of a craft to be able to do that. A lot of times, you know, you're dictated by the record set but you're, that you're pulling back, but you can still do things within your query that, that optimize it a bit. Now, we're not going to be delving into those as part of this course, but it just kind of some food for thought on, on why it's important to, uh, to write queries that, that are optimized and that have good performance and that are efficient. And uh, I suggest really at a, at a minimum that you should get into the habit of evaluating your query to see if it, if it is indeed an efficient query. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kind of get started here and take a look at some things. So what we're going to do is I've already built these queries and so you can follow along with me. Uh, let's go open up the first couple queries and have a look at them and under WebRoot Learn MySQL Foundations Examples I want you to open the query called query underscore efficiency 1a dot SQL and let's also get and open up the one that's query efficiency 1b dot SQL alright if we run the first query you see that it returns 38 rows. And if we run our second query, we'll see that it returns three rows. Now, just looking at that, which queries more efficient? And I think it, if you've fallen into the trap of saying, well, I, you know, I'm going to pick the one that returns the least amount of rows. That's really not the case when we're talking about query efficiency. So let's have a look at both of these queries. And they seem to run about the same, which is the experience you've had. So, so as we look at, at query 1B, we'll see that we're selecting uh, the three columns from the hospitalization table in the healthcare database where the discharge date is equal to this date. And in query 1A, it's the exact same query, except we're going after the admit date, where it's equal to this date. And so now the question is, is are they the same? Is one query efficient and one not the other? And how do we go about finding out the answer to that question? Well, what we can do in, in SQL is, is run what's called an explain plan against our query. And it's a relatively easy thing to do. What we do is we type in the keyword explain. And then the other keyword extended after that. And we put that before the select statement. And we run that. What that's going to do is it's going to give us back a single row of data. And it's going to tell us it's going to give us some metrics about the query that it would be running and, and about the efficiency of it. So if we run this query, we'll see that uh, this is going against, it actually is going in, and it's using an index. So there's an index on the hospitalization at mid date. So on at mid date, there's an index on this column. And it's returning 37 rows. Well, if we did a count on this table, and we'll forego doing that, you can just take it on faith, what I'm going to tell you is there's 1,099 rows in this table. So we are going in off of an index. Now let's come over to this query, and let's do the same thing. In fact, I'm just going to do a little cut and paste here. And let's run this query. And if we see that it's not going in off of a primary key or an index, and to return those three rows, it's reading the entire table. So this would be an example of a query that's not efficient. Now, in, in the grand scheme of things, if all you're reading is a table with a couple thousand rows, the fact that it does a table scan isn't a big deal at all. But again, if we're talking about this table as it would be applied to production, reading all the rows is certainly a big deal and probably something that, that we wouldn't be able to run in, again in a production environment just for pure performance reasons or if we did have to run it we'd have to run it 
kind of at ODARK 30 when system utilization was down, what have you. All right, uh, I want to pull up three more queries and kind of I expand a little bit on on this subject, talk a little bit more about a few other things. And so we're going to open up Query Efficiency 2A. to B and to C. And I've already got the explain extended included on each of these. So if we look at uh, this query, this is going against the financial table or the financial database, the securities table. So this table right here. And we're looking at, uh, we're pulling back the symbol and the trade date where the symbol is equal to JNJ. And if we run this query, we'll see that it's using the primary key. So it's going against the primary key. And we're going against symbol. And you can see also that the primary key consists of two columns. Symbol is the primary column and the secondary column is trade date. So a primary key or an index can consist of multiple columns. And this is a mission critical point is it's the first column that is the key one for query efficiency. And you're going to see that in just a moment. So if, if, we, if we truck on over to query efficiency 2, you'll see that I'm going and I'm running the query against where trade date is equal to this date. And if you notice, it's still part of the primary key, but it's a secondary column in the primary key. It's not the primary column. So when I run an explain plan against this, I want you to watch what happens here. Is I, It's part of the primary key, but it's not using the primary key because it's basically worthless using it. And indeed, it's doing an entire table scan. It's reading all 12,099 rows in there. Why is that? Because it's a secondary column in the primary key. So a, a key important point, if you're, if you're going against an index or a primary key that consists of multiple columns, it's only the first column in the primary key or index that really is, is going to give you the benefit, the performance benefit. And I'm not going to get into the reasons why here because it's a bit out of scope for 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 this this particular class. Okay, and now if I do query efficiency 2C, you can see I'm going after both. And if I run this, You can see I am using the primary key, and I'm only reading four rows. So again, back to a very efficient query. So a critical, critical take-home lesson to do. Now let's say in in the second query where I wanted this, uh, let's say I wanted to, I wanted to get this but I wanted to get it for just J and J. You know, I could come back and I could pass it a list with one item. In this case, I've passed it a list with, with four. And I would get it back. It'd be an inefficient run query. But I want to call your attention to something. I'm going to, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to run this, this query for you. So you can actually see the record set that comes back. So here's the record set that comes back. Now if I come to this query and, and it read the four rows. Very efficient query. I take off of here and I run this. Same date. Same, same date time criteria. Only I've specified the primary key values that I want to return. 
Now if I run this one, you'll see I get back nine rows. I was a, I was a bit lazy in terms of doing it, but the bottom line is I could pass in those nine rows and I crafted, crafted a very efficient query. So I wanted to look at all the, the symbols for, for this trade date for these stocks that I have. And by doing this, I've created a very efficient query, whereas in 2B, I haven't. I've essentially done a table scan, which again, could could be a performance problem for me. And, and it's not just working against billions of rows of data, keep in mind too. It, it also, there's other factors, like how many end users are pounding on the system at the same time. If, if I've got a thousand concurrent users that are running queries at this volume, as opposed to running queries at a volume where I'm doing, you know, a thousandth of the retrieving of data retrieval, and I apply that across a thousand concurrent users, my system resources dramatically go down. So this is a very important subject. And again, whether you, you're not going to be a guru at it right away, but like I said, I want you to be able to go in and understand if your query is efficient as it's written. Not necessarily that you're going to know at this point how to do something to make it more efficient. But that you can say, yeah, my, my query is efficient. This is how it's, how it's working. I have one other short thing to cover in this, and that is as, as we look at the various tables here that we're doing for the queries I've shown, we go and we look at the hospitalization table. You'll see the primary key. You'll also see indexes as columns that are bolded, but without getting into all the details, this is not the best way of figuring out is there an index on a column, what are the values of the index, what are the orders of the index, because frankly these could be in different order than what the index is in. So if you want to know if you're using an index or not, the best way is to open up and look at the schema itself. And so if we go back here, we'll take a look at the hospitalization. And I've got a copy of the schema, and if we open that up, we'll see that the primary key of the table itself, the hospitalization table, is is the account number field. And if we scroll down, we'll also see that there's an index on on that table using the admit date. And same thing for for this table over here, the sec the securities table. I think I have that in there. Let's we'll we'll have a look. Ah, uh, no, I don't. But I have some of the other ones in here, for example. So if we open up the medical concept, we get the schema for that. We'd see there's no indexes on it. There's only a, a primary key, and this is the value of the primary key, on and on and on. OK, I've, uh, I've not taught you enough information on this. I want you to head off, and I have a series of exercises for you to do to kind of reinforce what, what we've done together here and uh, some questions to answer regarding those exercises. So, see you later. Bye.